So I just finished watching all of the Vision Pro reviews so that you don't have to. However, on Friday, I'm inevitably going to be uploading a video uh, with my second first impressions on it. Uh, so, you know, I highly recommend you check that one out. Maybe subscribe if you haven't already done so. But anyways, after watching the videos that were out yesterday, a few things have become clear to me. And I kind of want us to stress some of my thoughts uh, about all of that in this video. So for starters, and I'm not really sure if I have a concrete order to all of this, so my apologies if this seems kind of jumbled together, but the unboxing experience to me was the first thing that I saw. And it seemed super premium, which is not a real shocker to me. But what is pretty shocking is just how huge the travel case is. Like, how am I supposed to travel with this thing? Sure, it's fine if you're tossing it in your car, but there's no way in my mind I can bring that case on a plane, at least not alongside my usual carry-on items. I did notice that there's a protective sleeve that comes on the Vision Pro to cover the glass. So honestly, for the plane, my thought was I might just detach the straps or maybe fold it up and just use that like protective cover that goes over the glass and just kind of shove that in the top of my backpack. I feel like that'll be fine. Now, speaking of straps, the major takeaway is that the default like single loop strap just ain't it. The dual loop one obviously looks more comfortable and according to those who have worn it in these videos, it is more comfortable. And even I can kind of attest to that because even though the top strap band that I tested back in June is definitely not the same one that Apple is shipping today, regardless, redistributing some of that weight to the top of your head makes way more sense for comfort and it is comfortable. And so I can just say that that's probably going to be the one that people will use the most. And I'm glad that it comes inside of the box. It's not an extra cost. Now, there were a lot of complaints about that, like messing up the top of your head with your hair and everything. Okay, like that was mentioned way too many times in one of the videos. I'm not sure why it was such a big deal, but like, whatever. I'm glad that this is an option and it seems like the one that everyone's going to use. Now, the persona thing is another feature that seems to be catching some hate. Is it creepy to have a 3D face scan of you and just kind of like a 3D looking character? Yeah, a little bit. I was certainly creeped out when I saw one on the Vision Pro for the first time, but then I was kind of blown away by what it was. It's a 3D render of your own face and it actually looks pretty good in some circumstances. You know, with some people, not so much. Joanna Stearns was a bit strange, but as she pointed out, it was because of her hair, it like doesn't move. So it provides this strange like, you know, that, that looks weird, I get that. Eyesight also had some poor reviews, and I do agree that it just does not look like what Apple initially advertised. All of the video showing eyesight, it's hard to see the eyes. The display looks pixelated and bad, and the reflection off the glass is bad. That again, it just makes everything so hard to see. So like, I don't know, just put the, the colorful waveform that happens, I, that just seems to be way better. Now it makes total sense as to why Apple didn't show us this at WWDC. And honestly, it's probably a feature that should just be removed, but I'm gonna give Apple the benefit of the doubt and hope that this is something they can make better in the future. Either way, this was the only thing that kind of stood out to me as, oh yeah, that doesn't look very good. Now there were some complaints on the battery as well. I was a big external battery hater when I first heard about this design choice. Seems very un-Apple-like to have a cord hanging down, but after wearing the headset, yeah, it's a little heavy. So strapping a battery to the top of your head just seems miserable. Even if it was on the back of your head to redistribute that weight, no thanks. Since Vision Pro is not really designed to be a mobile device per se, I mean, you can certainly get up and put the battery in a holder or put it in your pocket and move around. You're probably going to be using this most likely sitting down or laying down. The battery life, can certainly be larger. That's kind of my biggest complaint. Around two hours or so is a bit underwhelming, but also it's probably a good amount of time because you shouldn't be wearing it for that long. A little annoying that the cable is fixed to the battery and so that could easily break and then you're gonna have to spend $200 to get another one. And hopefully there are some good third-party options maybe in the future, um, some larger battery packs too, just in case. But you know, I'm not too worried about the battery as of right now, but that could certainly change as I continue to use the Vision Pro over the next few months. Now to me, I'm still curious what the killer app is going to be. It could very well just be the fact that you can run a ton of different apps and connect to your Mac and have a giant monitor for your Mac and then put it in like a breathtaking environment. Or it could just be watching content on Disney Plus or Apple TV Plus. I don't know. I have a slew of apps in my inbox from third-party developers and I cannot wait to try those out and just kind of see what that killer app might be. But as of right now, I just don't know. Overall, it seemed to me that everyone's like, final thoughts on it so far was like, 
acting as if they were underwhelmed by the Vision Pro. Yet repeatedly, I kept hearing things like this was the best in class at certain functions, or the displays were so good, and that other features were really cool and could be incredibly useful. But yet there was a lot of like, kind of hate towards it. I don't really know. I think this all stems from the confusion around who this product is for when we all know and repeatedly say that this is the first step towards Apple's, you know, presumed goal of AR glasses. So if we already know this, why can't we just enjoy the tech and advancements for what they are? I'm definitely not trying to fanboy over the Vision Pro. I'm not entirely sure how much I'm even going to use it post review or just not for work purposes. I can already tell you it's probably not looking good considering I have a MetaQuest 3 and I can count on one hand how many times I've used it for personal use. Now, the main appeal for Apple is that it's invested in an ecosystem that I already use pretty heavily, and it just works really well out of the box with all of your Apple integrated apps and things that you do. So the integration with your Mac and being able to use Vision Pro as one giant monitor while simultaneously running Vision Pro apps is one of the most intriguing features to me. And I'm glad that a lot of the early reviews suggest that this works really well. So there is some hope for some you know, daily use for me in that department. Now, when I tried Vision Pro, the quality of everything is immediately noticeable. It blew anything, any other experience that I've ever had, you know, on a MetaQuest or other AR, VR devices, glasses, whatever it might be. And because most of the time when I'm using those other devices, I'm trying to get the fit right and get the screen to not be so blurry and weird and not feel so like sick and dizzy after using it. I also have no interest in playing a ton of games, but I think that's because the displays don't look great on those other devices and watching content for long periods of time sounds kind of miserable. So I'm hoping that Vision Pro can change all of that for me. Since the Vision Pro seemingly exceeds in those areas, why are the initial thoughts on this device so down? Or at least everything just kind of seemed like people were, eh, you know, it's good at this stuff, but like, I don't, I don't really care, I don't know. Is it the price? It's not meant for the average consumer. I'm never going to recommend this to anyone unless they're like an AR, VR, or just tech enthusiast and have disposable income to spend. If you're curious about this space and you're not any of those other things that I just mentioned, then the MetaQuest at $500 or whatever it is will still be mind blowing enough and you can save a ton of money. Either way, I'm excited to try the Vision Pro again. Cannot wait to get it on Friday and give you all of my first, well, second impressions. So please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video in just a few short days. Of course, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your thoughts so far after the initial reviews? Go ahead and let me know down in those comments. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.